Welcome back to the next video in our series on optical remote sensing. It's part of the subject Advanced Remote Sensing and GIS at the Australian National University. My name is David Summers and this next video is looking at image characteristics in optical remote sensing. So we're going to touch on uh, four main characteristics of imagery in this video. The spatial resolution, uh, the spectral resolution, the radiometric resolution and the temporal resolution. So spatial resolution uh, is a compromise between the the, uh, the extent of the imagery, so how much land area the image covers, and also the uh, the, the detail contained within the image, so the, the pixel resolution. So here we have an image of the globe. It's obviously a very wide extent, and it provides a great deal of information at a global uh, scale. It'd be very useful if you're interested in uh, weather patterns or cloud movements and that kind of thing, but it's much less useful if you're interested in what's happening at a very fine scale. Alternatively, this image, which provides a great deal of detail at quite a fine scale, will be much less uh, useful if you're interested in what's happening um, you know, over the whole of Sydney or over a, a much greater extent than this image provides uh, information on. So here we have a MODIS image. It covers a, a huge extent, two th uh, more than 2,000 kilometres wide. Uh, you can see uh, a great deal of information that's happening at a, at a, at a very, over a very wide range of area. But what if we were interested in, informa in, some, in a process that was happening in a much smaller area? Well, here's a, a contrast. Here we have a Landsat satellite, which has a much reduced extent. This whole Landsat image fits in that small yellow box that so covers a much uh, smaller extent, but it provides a, a, a lot more detail. Already we can see a lot more information in the Landsat satellite. Uh, you can pick out the Murray River, for example, not evident in the um, MODIS imagery. You can pick out individual paddocks. You can pick out patterns in the urban centres around Adelaide and, the, and, and vegetation patterns at a much finer scale. If we drill, drill down further, this is looking comparing a Landsat, uh, the same Landsat uh, image scene with a QuickBird image scene. QuickBird is, a, is another satellite uh, but that collects much smaller extents uh, and a, at a much finer resolution. And you can see this, uh, this quick bird scene is only 10 by 5 kilometres, but there's a huge amount of detail uh, and quite fine detail. You can pick up individual paddocks, you can pick up individual houses, you can see the roads dividing paddocks and properties. And this is just demonstrating the same thing, but at a pixel level. So you can see the one metre pixel on the far left provides extraordinary detail of uh, individual uh, canopies even, uh, the roads and the patterns in the landscape. And as we move up through 10 metres pixel resolution to 30 metre pixel resolution, you can see that decreasing detail. And so spatial resolution is a compromise between this, uh, this getting a broad extent and getting uh, the fine detail out of the, uh, at a pixel level. So another important characteristic of, um, of remotely sensed images is spectral resolution. We've talked a lot already about electromagnetic um, radiation and this, the, the optical, the range that optical remote sensing exploits. Uh, so here we have uh, the green vegetation, dry vegetation and soil, and you can see there's an enormous amount of information over that entire spectral range. But for example, if we were to um, uh, only use visible photography to collect information about these different materials. Um, uh, we'd only be collecting information in the in the blue, green, and the red. So we'd miss out on all of that information over the the range of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum used in optical remote sensing. If we uh, compare that with Landsat imagery, you can see that we're collecting information in very discrete bands. So we get information still in those uh, the blue, the green and the red range, but it's only in discrete bands. We also get information in the near infrared and the short wave infrared. The discrete nature of those bands means that we're collecting a single point of information at each uh, over the over the entire width of each of those bands. And so while they cover a wide area, each point is only each band is only recorded as a single data point. And you can see that here. If we only look at the information that's recorded by the sensor, 
it's much reduced compared to that comprehensive spectra that we saw in the previous slide. If we then look at a hyperspectral sensor, you can see that that's collecting information over the entire spectra. And in fact, we're getting, in, in this is a high map sensor, and we're getting 128 bands. And we're getting a lot more detail about what's happening across that whole spectral range. And this is just as, uh, making the same comparison. Here we have vegetation soil uh, spectra on the left and soil spectra on the right. And as we move down from the top, there's a, a, an early Landsat satellite scanner which only provided uh, some visible and near-infrared, only collected data in the visible and near-infrared and only at discrete points. And then uh, with a later Landsat satellite, you can see that they still only did collected information at very discrete wave bands, but they collected more information into the uh, short wave infrared. Then there's the high map airborne scanner, which collects uh, 128 bands, and you can see already that huge increase in information that final example, the field spectrometer, this is not an image sensor, but it collects single spectra of material that the sensors pointed at, and that collects thousands of bands. And so this gives you an, uh, a visual representation of the differences between the different amount of information that's available with increasing resolution. Another important concept in image characterization is radiometric resolution. Radiometric resolution refers to the range of brightness levels or, the, or the, the amount of information that's recorded as digital numbers. So here in this image there are 256 levels of grey, 256 brightness levels, and this is what we call 8-bit data. This next image shows uh, 16 levels of grey or 4-bit data, 4 levels of grey or 2-bit data, and 2 levels of grey or 1-bit data. And you can see as we decrease through each of these levels, there's less and less information available. So different uh, sensors record information at, the, at different levels of radiometric resolution. And understanding the resolution of the data that you're using is an important part of understanding the power that's available within the imagery and how much you can discern from the imagery itself. Finally, I want to talk about uh, temporal resolution. So temporal resolution is the rate or the frequency with which uh, images are collected uh, at, for a given site on the Earth's surface. So obviously airborne data imagery is collected when someone goes up and flies the plane and collects the imagery. Whereas for satellite data, uh, you can revisit those sites repeatedly over and over and over again because uh, the satellites can just repeatedly acquire data every time they pass over the site. So, for example, we, the, on the screen we have MODIS data, which has a daily acquisition level rate. So it passes over every site on the Earth's surface every day and acquires a new image. And this data set for MODIS goes back to the year 2000. By contrast, you have Landsat data, which similarly acquires, it, it, it's constantly acquiring data, and it passes over any given site on the Earth's surface every 16 days. So again, temporal resolution is an important concept. It's often a compromise between what you're trying to achieve, what's available, potential limitations such as computational um, issues or limitations. And as with many of these concepts around um, image characteristics, the decision about what you use is, to, is really influenced by what you're trying to achieve.